we shall defend the nation from terror and all form of criminality that threaten the peace, the peace and stability of our country. Of securing lives and citizens, uh, President Bola Tinubu on Monday, June 19th, 2023, uh, appointed new service chiefs who were consequently uh, confirmed by the Senate on, the, on Thursday, June 13th. Uh, Christopher Musa was appointed the Chief of Defense Staff, uh, Taurid Lagbaja as the Chief of Army Staff, Emmanuel Ogala as the Chief of Naval Staff, and uh, Air Vice Marshal Hassan Abubakar as the Chief of Air Staff. Uh, while Major General Emmanuel Undiande was appointed the Chief of uh, Defense Intelligence. How has these appointments, or how have these appointments rubbed off on the security situation across the country? Would we say it's better, have things remained the same, or have they gotten worse? Well, let, let's now bring in security and risk management expert, Oyenkachi Adekola. Good morning, and thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, and good morning to your viewers and listeners. All right. Uh, the coming of the new administration, some hoped would bring a different tale to the insecurity challenges that the country has faced. Over the years, we've seen it uh, rebrand itself. It's been different evolutions of security challenges. We've had the Boko Haram insurgents, and of you know the most recent one will be the kidnapping and the bandits, the unknown gunmen. From your assessment so far, President Bola Ametinubu made a number of changes when he came into office. Would you say that the security situation in the country is much better, is you know, the same, or has gotten worse? I think that uh, the situation we see um, has gotten worse. And by no fault of the new administration, I would say, expectedly, we had... Um, we did some analysis before the election. We looked at pre-election issues. We looked at um, post-election issues. We also considered in, of course, in the risk management um, approach we take, we considered the time it would take the government to settle and before the new ministers get sworn in and then hit the ground running before they get, of course, there's a bit of a lag um, in getting into the ministry, getting their hands on the issues, and then beginning to implement. We had reckoned and estimated that um, it would take the government about minimum six months to begin to get a sense of a direction. And um, by which time, um, nature abhors a vacuum, um, things run in risk of becoming increasingly worse. And um, I think that's pretty much what we have seen. We've seen on, on characteristically an uptick in violence in the rainy season. The rainy season typically is not a fighting season. Um, the, the issues are there, inherited, yes, we may argue. Um, and I'd, I'd made a point to say that regardless of who is appointed what, once the issues are uh, entrenched and beyond persons, just changing personnel doesn't necessarily give you any sustainable change in trajectory. Uh, what only just happens is that we do the same sing song, change service chiefs, get a bit of a respite for two, three months, then the politicians, the social issues, um, the problem with the criminal justice system, um, the centrifugal forces playing at us, then the international interest groups working within our near neighbors, these other issues, and again, our false posture would always uh, present a significant challenge to any service chief or any president. So there are structural issues that must be addressed. And um, it would have been a surprise if things were getting better just by just a mere change of an administration. Okay, well, you know, would um, we have our um, correspondent in Abuja this morning, so we will connect um, back to him, Amadin Uyi, and of course, uh, come back to you, sir. Uh, Amadin, can you hear us? Thank you. Um, okay, well, while we're still struggling with that, 
Um, Mr. Rekachi, I, I, I want to get your views on, you know, I'm, I understand that, yes, you know, there have been new service chiefs, you know, new alignments have been made, uh, uh, but do you, do you feel, do you believe that these names who have been mentioned and the, the guys who have currently been given these positions, um, aside just changing the names, do you believe that, you know, Nigeria as it stands, understands the structure and, of course, the the redirection that needs to take place, the blockages in, in, in corruption that needs to take place, if we truly want to tackle the insecurity challenges that we're dealing with? I, I believe that we do understand the issues. It's just the political will to implement the solutions that are necessary. Um, but again, remember that um, the problems that we face are quite hydra-headed. And um, in classical... Um, issues of national security. What Nigeria faces would be classed as a wicked problem. A wicked problem is such a problem that only one set of situation, um, solutions cannot conveniently resolve them. You have the macroeconomic issues, um, you have the societal issues, you have the political issues, um, then you then have the structural issues within governance. We run a bit of a unitary system. We don't take short, um, command to where command will be most effective. Um, so the number of issues um, I'm talking at us. So I, I get the sense that um, we understand the issues, uh, but how we go about implementing the issues is also a function of what we have in our minds and in our heads and what we consider as priorities. Uh, clearly, I don't see the Nigerian citizen as being the, at the center of the security design and structure that we have. We've, we've, we've espoused the value of moving away from regime protection and moving more towards human security. But um, you cannot implement human security without requisite resources, um, foresight innovation, and some political reforms and restructuring. The path to that restructuring is also fraught with zone challenges. Um, our society is one that enjoys a lot of um, inefficiencies, and people see some of those structural inefficiencies as their bet rights. So once you begin to pull at some of those um, uh, benefits that people enjoy from a flawed system, they themselves will throw up um, their own tantrums, and that again increases the complexity in society. So. I don't have any sense in my any sense or any doubt in my mind that um, they don't understand the issues. They understand the issues. I do not envy them one bit. They are politicians. They uh, went in for the office, and sometimes I think that politicians do this not knowing the full ramification of um, the position they are putting themselves into, only to get in there to find out that um, you know it's a it's a it's a different kettle of fish. Just yesterday, FIME came out to say they played politics with subsidy removal. Those are some of the issues that can impact negatively on um, insecurity also. So I get a sense that um, they have a sense of the problems. We see the problems every day, the amounts of kidnapping, um, banditry. We can see the issues in the Southeast. The issue in the Southeast is a social political issue, you know, not one that necessarily must be resolved by kinetic force. But the way the political, uh, the levers of power is structured in Nigeria, you have to negotiate into the center. So there are some issues even with the Southeasterners themselves, the way they play their politics, there's a bigger issue with how uh, we play our politics, winner takes all, you know. So we've seen this administration try to uh, ameliorate some of those uh, political issues by giving appointments across party lines and moving. The problems are much. The problems will not um, go away overnight. And I know if you're asking me, have I seen any significant change since the common administration in terms of um, insecurity? No, I have not seen that. Um, the government is yet to begin to implement its policies. It just won in its ministers. I'm itching and waiting to see um, all the mounted promises that were made and how they will go about implementing them and how we begin to feel rather safely on our roads. Kudos must be given to the past administration, um, Buhari, on uh, the situation in the Northeast. Um, I, I think we say that politicians should face one thing and do it fairly well. I think that he did face the Northeast and we have some respite, but 
There are bigger issues now in the northwest and in the north central. And we have some destabilization in Niger. And then we have the challenges in Sahel. We have the multi-dimensional issues of poverty. And um, insecurity is generally going up. And um, this, we are now in a cocktail of uh, post reform backlash. You know, so you can begin to understand the context in which this administration must try to first get a grasp on the issues, stay ahead of the narrative, and begin to implement a way forward. Um, it's no mean feat um, what we expect of them. Uh, but like the president did say, do not feel sorry for me. Um, I put myself forward. And I don't, I don't feel sorry for him. I'm waiting eagerly as you are, as your viewers are waiting to see um, what will change. But for now, um, sorry, not much has changed. All right. You've talked about them knowing the problems and how implementation or execution of solutions is where the challenge would be. Let's talk about the security budget and its implementation. How important is it that the security budgets be audited? And how far back must we look? Do you even have any hope? First of all, is it important that we look back at you know the past budgets and where we may have gone wrong? And do you have any confidence that the current administration will be able to do that? We had conversations some years back about uh, Dasuki Gates. It was a conversation that we talked about, but I, I'm not quite sure how that was resolved. And we've had scenarios like this here and there, but nothing much has been done about it. So do you think that it's very important that we ensure that this is sorted out um, and that we review the security budget? Let, let's know what your thought is on that. Yeah, um, that's a very interesting question. And um what comes to my mind is that I think we want to go down another rabbit hole in terms of chasing down past spend. I think that that's better left with uh, civil society organizations, organizations like um, Budget It and some other, yes, why not, for sake of posterity and um, ensuring that, you know, we um, enshrine some level of accountability within the spend. Um, yes, absolutely. Any budget should be audited. Uh, but uh, of course, not every spend in national security would be made public. That's why you have the Senate Committee on Intelligence or national security or whatever structure they've set up um, to be able to review on behalf of Nigerian people setting um, cl classified spend. So yes, obviously you can open that up. But my, <laughs> my bigger problem is the cultural problem. Uh, my bigger problem is the people who we put in office in trust to act reasonably on behalf of the Nigerian people. The procurement process is a big problem. Um, then uh, the big elephant in the room is um, if you how do you send a non-technical person to procure technical equipment on behalf of a user unit? Um, and that user unit has no input, input into the procurement process. And, and it's like um, you watch um, Wiki's coin rounds of the FCT, and you know you can just see it's just contract, contract, contract awarded, initial mobilization, variation, variation, variation. You know multiple contracts issued. Who is monitoring what? Uh, we've had instances in this country. For example, where someone offered us a drone system by a Nigerian company to cost about one point something million, um, it was not collected. Uh, rather, we went for something that cost us about two hundred million dollars, and one point five million Nigeria currency. You know, uh, same capability, same function, but we rather spend millions of dollars on on a product because it is packaged and sold uh, by tamed experts who speak fanciful language who may pick a product worth $50 and put some coinage around it, maybe call it um, um, Orimos 100X and claims that, that that system is $2,000 per unit, and, and then we procure. So the bigger problem for me, I, thankfully, the Minister of um, Technology um, is a young person. Um, so procurement is the bigger problem. We try to address this by doing government to government procurement. We also try to address this by doing government to OEM. What, what that means that Nigerian government try to cut away the influence of uh, middlemen 
Um, that's a good initiative in its own self. But even the OEM themselves, we've procured certain fighter jets from China, from the Chinese that are yet to be supplied to us. We procured certain number of super tokanos uh, that are yet to be supplied to us. Even the super tokanos supplied to us were uh, not uh, fitted with certain capabilities that we really need uh, to create a punch in our fight against insurgency. So there, there are a myriad of um, issues. The, the bigger problem is that Nigeria is too, too, too big to be micromanaged. So where do you put your hand on the issues? You want to talk about procurement in the police, procurement in the Navy, you want to talk about procurement in the Army, you want to talk about procurement in the NSC, or the fact that most chiefs are running operations, a chief of defense staff that should be the head of policy, strategy, and leadership for the defense forces may want to have his operations. The NSA wants to run operations. Chief of Army staff, of course, is the custodian of operation. Everybody seems to want to be, you know, the leg wants to be the hand, the hand wants to be the leg. You have this disjointed approach to um, national security and a siloed based approach. The issues are plenty. I don't know where to start from. So yes, audit the um, spend as it should be, but what, how do you now do going forward? Uh, Nigeria claims to be the giant of Africa, but with profound respect, we are giants of nothing. We cannot even cow uh, Niger into a position. Um, in, in Africa, our force, our military defense forces cannot be compared to Algeria, to, um, to Egypt, not even to South Africa, not even to Ethiopia. So how are we the giants of Africa? Right. And without a without a proper defense posturing, you cannot project national interest. So the issues are quite much. Yeah, I, uh, let me just Thank quickly you. ask this, you know, before we, of course, uh, get to the end. I, I want to know, you know, what your thoughts are. Today, of course, the uh, presidential election petitions tribunal will be giving its verdict. The security agency is stationed, you know, I believe, you know, in many parts of uh, the federal capital territory. The DSS has, you know, issued statements. Uh, police, of course, has also issued its own, you know, warning uh, statements, basically. Um, how do you think we can best manage, you know, whatever reactions emerge today? And, of course, you know, the, the idea of disgruntled Nigerians, 200 million disgruntled Nigerians, is not a good, um, you know, security stance for any nation. Um, I don't know where we think this backlash or um, uprising will come from. I, I cannot see it, basically. I, I've had conversations with a lot of people. I think that um, this is part of the social deterrence uh, measures by the DSS to call a dog a bad name and then lay ambush for the dog um, so that um, any overreaction of the government can be um, excused as a threats to national security, because the charges for which one can be charged on treasonable grounds are quite broad. And um, this measure by the DSS is quite um, preemptive, and for me, it's an overkill. Um, secondly, I think that there's a lot of misinformation and ignorance parading itself as activism in our society. And it's quite appalling. The language all eyes on the judiciary is quite not sitting. Um, at best, it's um, rather sad and unfortunate. All eyes, what does that mean, all eyes on the judiciary? You first allow the judiciary to make their pronouncements and see the base of the ruling. And we will be surprised today. Um, court rulings can be, judgments can be very long. Sometimes lawyers themselves sleep in courts, let alone Nigerians. And thank God it's being publicized. Let's see if people have the patience to stick through the process and listen to the arguments being made. So um, Nigeria is a very beautiful place with a number of contradictions. There's a... Uh, um, contradictions on the part of the people who feel agitated, uh, but not understanding clearly the issues. Uh, what are the prayers of the parties in court? What are they asking the courts? Uh, what case have they put before the court? People don't know. Uh, what are the issues being discussed? People don't know. But we have um, um, influence operators, like we like to call them black market influence operators, some of them Leonard Silks, um, just speaking rather quite verbose you know, trying to push a narrative, which is fine. The law allows you to argue. Uh, then you have the DSS and um, state agencies of um, states who are quite um, used to uh, the excessive use of force or that forceful posturing 
um, that in itself can pose a challenge to uh, long-term um, cohesion as a people. Um, then, of course, you have the people who don't even read. And, you know, uh, I, I listened to Abbasan John make a comment and say that we may perhaps have to relook at this liberal democracy we are practicing. Because if the majority of the people are poor, 123 million, 3 million people dimensionally poor and poorly educated, if they make a voting decision, what decision do they make themselves and how do we um, judge or trust that decision? So there are a number of um, issues. For me, I don't see, I don't see where the unrest will come from. Um, I, I don't see it in, in River State, I don't see it in Lagos State, I don't see it in Kano, I don't see it in Abuja. And those are major um, city centers in across Nigeria. Yeah, there may be some skirmishes or protests in Abuja. Those may be limited to the Unity Fountain. And that's all I can see. For now, um, you have the military setting up condoms, you have the DSS, the police, um, setting up, um, and they've just effectively made the FCT a garrison state, which is also uh, proper. Remember what happened in the January 6th election, um, January 6th saga in the U.S., um, even when you had some of these orders. So it is necessary, out of an abundance of caution, to take a precautionary posture to some of these things, because the problem may not be the people themselves. It could be um, psyops of foreign operations happening, taking advantage of the cracks right. or dissent of society to destabilize society. So the government has a duty to um, take a preemptive posture. But I, I don't think the excessive language um, helps our democracy in any way. All right. So let's find out. I mean, you've given us your standpoint as regards this and uh, you don't expect to see that you know any level of insecurity in abuja but we do have our correspondent in abuja madin ui who is live at the court of appeal where judgment will be delivered on the suit challenging the outcome of the february 25th presidential election we'll come back to you to speak some more but let's talk to amadin and find out what exactly the situation is he's joining us via phone good morning amadin what's happening in abuja okay, good morning first, first of all from uh, last night we witnessed that uh, the city has been sort of on a lockdown. Security, uh, from last night, we observed that security has been beefed up. And this morning, we found out that several access roads to the court of appeal have been barricaded by uh, security agencies. You cannot access the court venue except you have a special accreditation to be able to assess the venue. We even hear the staff of the Court of Appeal who were not given that accreditation were told not to bother coming to work today. Now, uh, there's tension in the air, but uh, it, it has been helped a little bit by the NLC strike where a lot of workers have on their own chosen to observe the strike and not come to work. But uh, in terms of security, like I said, the the the, the town is on the lockdown. Several uh, several routes into the city center, the Nyanya Aziz, we hear that soldiers have barricaded that road, and there is a uh, very uh, serious traffic ongoing. But within the city center, uh, there is uh, very sparse movement because people are not in town. And then around the court of appeal premises, uh, it's been barricaded by police personnel. All right, Amandine, you've given us a clear picture of what the security situation is looking like and the number of roads that have been shut down, the restricted access into the court premises. But let's talk about, I mean, you said there is tension in the air, but from what it seems, it seems are there genuine concerns that there might be a maybe possible reaction in form of protest after the election, uh, the tribunal results or the tribunal judgment is delivered. Are those concerns legit? Is there reason to be bothered about this? Now, uh, the security agencies have come out to, to uh, send strong warnings. Uh, the federal secretariat at the Eagle Square close to the Court of Appeal, we saw anti-riot uh, police uh, vehicles, we saw their HELOC vans, and uh, we've seen them trying to patrol. Now, but we've not heard of any protest within the city center. Though, if you follow the uh, trend on 
people have been talking about protests if the judgment does not go one way uh, that some uh, supporters of uh, a particular candidate want that judgment to. But we've not observed such gatherings. In fact, what the security personnel have done is that uh, they are not just stopping people from entering in front of a few premises at several meters. Uh, several meters to the court of appeal, that is where they put their barricades. So uh, you cannot, uh, between a hundred and something meters, even get to the premises. So if you are thinking of protest, you do not even have access to the court of appeal premises. We're entering town, we've not heard of any protest holding anywhere in town, but we are hoping that after the judgment, uh, Abuja will still remain peaceful, and then the, those who are dissatisfied with the judgment can appeal to the Supreme Court. All right, uh, Amadin Uyi, thank you so much for joining us. We hope to be able to connect with you in later bulletins. And we certainly hope that there wouldn't be any form of chaos after the judgment is delivered and that justice will be manifestly seen to be done by all. Thank you for joining us. All right. Now back to our guest. Uh, we have been having a conversation about the security architecture in Nigeria. And um, on a final note, as we wrap up, Mr. Oyekachi Adekola, um, I, I want to read out a, Adekoya. I to, Adekoya. Thank you very much. I, I apologize for that. Um, I want to quickly quote the Minister of Defense. Um, recently, in a conversation with the Nigerian Bar Association, in, a, in an, an address of the Nigerian Bar Association, he says, Nigeria will bid goodbye to insecurity with, with the deployment of modern military equipment to fight the menace. And this was a message at the Nigerian Bar Association Conference. Is this a position that you agree with? And in as quickly as possible, what are some of the most important measures that they must put in place to hit the ground running to ensure that we nip this problem? I mean, right now, it's, I don't know if it's a nipping in the bud scenario, but deal with insecurity as it already has worsened, like you said. Okay, thank you for the question. Um, unfortunately, I will not be able to speak to the uh, comments made by the Minister of Defense, who I, as you all know, just assumed office. Um, one, two, he's also a politician. He's um, duty bound to um, make the statements he's making. Three, he's a government official. There is no government that would not sell hope to its people. Um, so we just wait to see um, in terms of hard facts what would change from where i'm sitting i see nothing um and and that's not being uh, pessimistic uh because what it just means is that we'll be at the mercy of other countries in terms of procuring some of these weapon systems we don't produce um even bullets sufficient to meet our requirements in this country let alone talking about modern weapon systems and some of these weapon systems are not lying on a shelf somewhere. You have to make the order, then it has to be produced for you and then delivered. Some production time will take two, three years. Um, even the ones ordered by Good Luck Jonathan, some of them we've not fully received them, let alone those ordered uh, by then President Mohamed Buhari. So um, we, I say we will wait patiently for the next two to three years to get a sense of what the uh, Minister of Defense is talking about, short of bringing in private military contractors who already have their set of equipment to move in and conduct surgical strikes and some things. I don't know where the modern equipment will come from, but um, let's see. Maybe this government can perform some magic. In terms of what must be done, we must take our approach to security local. That's a sensible thing to do. Local initiative. We must take initiative from the the attackers and return the initiative back to the communities. That's what we must do. Right. Sorry, I don't know if you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you uh, loud and clear. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us. And like you said, we're just going to have to wait. Uh, he's just come into office. We do hope that in the next 100 days, we can look back and say that insecurity has either become a thing of the past or has been reduced to the barest minimum. Thank you very much for your time with us this morning. Thank you for having me. All right.